Well, this is, in fact, a photo of me. But it's not me. It is an image. It is, it is a, a, a vessel that bears my image. It is a picture of me. I am not God. I am not omnipresent. So if that picture was me, it would be impossible for that picture to be over there and for me to be over here. Because the picture itself, in essence, is not who I am. It's just an image that, that bears a, a picture of me. And so we are, are image bearers. We carry, we walk with the very image of God. And what the enemy's plan and strategy to do in all our lives is to take that image and to Photoshop it and to taint it and to make it look like something different. You see, it's still, it's still the image of me, but when you add things and you subtract things, then it begins to look like something different or someone different. And the enemy's goal in our lives is to try to photo shop your image because when he looks at you he sees Christ and so it's the culture it's the image that he's after and so every day that we step in this in this society in this culture we're challenged because we are supposed to be image bearers in this society of Christ but the challenge comes in and not being saved because I think most of us here are saved no if you're saved, raise your hand. If you know you're saved, raise your hand. Okay, some of you don't know yet. That's okay. Being saved is amazing, is it not? Amen. Being saved is life transforming. It's life changing. It changes your perspective. It changes your mindset. It changes all these different ways that we, that, that we would normally live, right? Amen. But being saved sometimes is just enough for believers, being saved is just enough for Christians. Being saved is, is sort of a result, a conclusion to the journey for some of us. And, you know, when Adam and Eve created the culture of sin and death, God sent his son to create a different culture, to give us a perspective and a model of a different way to live of a different uh, set of principles to live by. He wanted to redeem us. He wanted to bring us back to the place where we now had authority again and we would create the atmosphere of the culture and we would influence the culture. This is why Jesus came back and he gave us a mandate. Jesus said that we are ambassadors. He said in the Bible, we are ambassadors. Of the kingdom. I believe it was Paul who said that, but it was Jesus through Paul. <laughs> that we are ambassadors of the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, to be an ambassador is a powerful statement that he calls us ambassadors. Because years and years ago, in, in the time when Rome was a powerful empire, they will send ambassadors into different regions. And what the ambassador would do is, the ambassador would go and set up an atmosphere and a culture that looked exactly like Rome. So that when you would step into a different place, no matter where you were at, no matter how far it was from Rome, they dressed like Rome, they, 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 they thought like Romans, they, they talked like Romans, and even though that you weren't physically in Rome, you would step in that place and you would think that you were in Rome because a culture and an atmosphere and a way of life was established so that people can feel like they were actually in Rome. As an ambassador of Christ, Christ has just not called us to be saved. He has called us to, to change atmospheres, to, to introduce this culture of living that Christ has put in us. He's called us to go in society and be ambassadors and say, we are from a, a kingdom. We're citizens of a place called heaven. And so we're not just saved. It's not enough just to be saved, but we are called to be ambassadors to change our environment. Amen. But the problem is what happens sometimes. Daniel, come. You tied it too short. Pastor. So, still too short. Okay, for time's sake, that would be good. 
Okay, so I'm representing what I call a Jesus culture. He represents society's culture. And the rope represents a standard. And so what happens to us as Christians is we, we get saved and we're believers now and we're excited and yeah, we're saved and we tell people we're Christians. Great. But what happens is he's living a totally different perspective uh, looking at life from a totally different perspective and living a totally different lifestyle than I am. I view life differently. And he says, we're going through the journey of life. And now, remember, connectivity is important. So I'm still connected to this man who's connected to a different culture. And I'm walking with him, and he says, you know, it's been a rough week, and uh, I think I'm going to smoke some weed. You know, just just a few days, man. Just just smoke a blunt before I go to bed because, uh, you know, I just need to relax. You know, and they use it in hospitals now and stuff, so it's cool. You know, I mean, it's it's medically proven that you know it just helps stuff. You know, you know. But so, and I'm a Christian. I'm like, yeah, I know what you're saying, man. I'm not gonna do it because I'm a Christian. But um, we we'll go to your house, you smoke a blunt, whatever, and um, I just hang out. Cool. We continue on our journey of life. And then the issue of homosexuality comes up. He says, oh, you know, my brother, he, he is attacked with the spirit of homosexuality. Or my brother's attacked with the spirit of lust. And, you know, he loves this woman or he loves this man. And I don't think there's anything wrong with them having sex because they love each other. Yeah, love is a powerful thing, you know. I understand that, Daniel. Um, I mean, I'm a Christian. I don't really believe in that, but if they're not hurting anybody, you know, they love each other. Uh, I'll pray for them. Cool. So we continue walking through this journey of life. And he's living in his culture, and I'm living in my culture. And how a culture is established is not just being connected but being united. And unity can only be established by agreement. And unless I agree with him, there can be no unity. Even if I'm connected to him, there can be disunity if I disagree with him. But disagreement is not walking in the same direction that he's walking in. Disagreement only comes when a standard is raised. And so as Christians... The way we raise a standard is not walking through life in society, in this culture like this. But the way we live a, 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 a Jesus culture is that he goes through his journey this way. And I'm still connected to him. But I'm walking through my journey this way. And I said, brother, I know that you want to smoke that blunt because it's been a rough week. But I have to go a different direction. I can't go with you. I'm, I'm standing against that. I know this may hurt. Put a little bit of shoulder into it, brother. I know this may <laughs> hurt or go against you. But, but I, this may even affect our relationship. But I have to go this direction in my life because I, I have to raise a standard because it's a culture that I live by and a perspective that I live my life viewing it from that says that this is abomination to my God. Amen. And so living my life, I am not disconnected from the culture. I am connected to the culture. But there's a disagreement that's constantly going on every day that we get together. And what's going to happen is something is either going to break loose where he decides to totally uh, dis disengage from me or it is not by might but nor by power but by the spirit. I'm not hitting him over the head with the Bible condemning him. I'm loving him through this, this disagreement. I'm loving him through this challenge but I'm showing him my example, my love through Christ and saying, listen, I've got to walk this way and by the spirit will begin to draw him in and so he turns around and begins to walk my direction and that is creating a Jesus culture. Thank you, sir. We, we have been called to do something different 
not to go according to the status quo. But we hear words in this world like tolerance. We hear wor words in this world like acceptance. We hear words in this world like uh, everyone is together and everyone should be united and there should be one gospel and one religion and one church and all that nonsense. But Christ has not called us to be all inclusive. Christ has called us to be exclusive. Christ has called us to be a challenge to this society. He's called us to be and move and, and think different than everybody else and so it is not enough to be saved and just be in the midst of the culture but we have to raise up a standard and live a Jesus culture and go a different direction see the problem is we have become possessors of the light but not projectors of the light see if I have a light bulb in my hand I can carry around the light bulb everywhere I go but it will not project any light now I'm possessing a vessel that projects light. But unless the light bulb is connected to something that, that gives the, the, the vessel, the bulb, energy to be able to project light, although I'm a possessor of the vessel of the light, I'm ineffective in projecting it. And so we have done, excuse me, a great job of possessing the light because we're saved and Christ lives in us. But we have been ineffective in projecting that light. See, light is so powerful. Light is so powerful. See, light doesn't need anything to exist. It doesn't need anything. The essence of light. Now, a vessel that projects light needs to be connected to a source, but the essence of light itself needs no man, needs no vessel. It needs nothing to project it because light is God himself. The Bible says that Christ was the light of the world. The, the scripture, the thing they did ignite, the, the, what do we call it, guys? The skit. Thank you. The skit they did said that we are the salt of the earth. And to be the salt of the earth means that years ago in the Old Testament days to transport food back and forth, in order to keep the food, food from decaying, they would put salt in it as a preservative. And we are called as the to be the salt of the earth, to be preservatives in the midst of a dying and decaying world. That's our calling. And to be light bearers that shine in the midst of the darkness. See, light and darkness are so different because light doesn't need anything to exist. But darkness, darkness cannot, darkness solely exists based upon the absence of light. In other words, darkness would not exist if there was light present. So darkness needs light to be absent in order for it to exist. Therefore, if the world is getting darker and colder and things are getting worse in society, it is a testament to our ineffectiveness and being present in the midst of the darkness to eliminate the darkness around us. And we can't blame anything else, church. We can't blame anybody else, church, but ourselves. Because we've done a great job of creating a culture that stays within these walls. We've done a great job in building great buildings and facilities that, that, that uh, uh, harvest or that, that keep in the projection of the light. 